everyone, welcome to the NAC um, Prepare Template demo. Um, I'm going to be speaking about the NextGen EHR version of the Collecting Social Determinants of Health and the Prepare Template. So let's just dive right in. A little bit of template information. So the original version was built um, by the YNI Coast Comprehensive Health Center and a project that included NAC, um, Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations, the Oregon PCA, and the Institute for Alternative Futures. This first version was built on a platform that was prior to 5883. And so NextGen was not willing to support the template at that time. So what we found is when the template was released and people started downloading it, people were on 5883, and there was some incompatibility with the prior version versus the version that was um, many members were on. So what we did was we lobbied NextGen. And we said, we really need you to update this template. We need you to make it work in 5883 because we have about 75% of the nation is on this version versus the version the template was created on. And NAC and NextGen were able to collaborate on a 5883 version that would be supported by NextGen. And this template was actually released late December last year. So we've had it for about a year now. So in looking at the template, um, there's a consistent design that's consistent with the KBM of 8.3 and now 8.4. So there's maximized shared fields within the database. So anywhere that NAC and NextGen and, and my organization, OSIS, participated in this, we said, can we map it to this field? We're already collecting this information. And there was a lot of collaboration that made this consistent design so that we weren't double documenting. We made sure that there was confidential questions that would have a work group access control. So if you don't want certain work groups to have access to the confidential panel, we have the ability to lock that down. And we also have an associated document. So you can actually have a tangible, printable, faxable, send it to the patient portal document if you would want it. And there's also the ability to utilize the HR navigation to configure where you launch the um, prepare template from because it is a freestanding template. So a couple of installation tips if you're going to do this on your own and don't have someone helping you. Install it into a test environment and make sure you test it before you ever put it into your production environment. You do not want to put it in production and lo and behold there was something missed or there's a bug and it kind of cripples you at that point. So always put it into test. Please remember do not alter any of the triggers on this template. It could lead you to errors because there's other mappings, as I mentioned, the shared fields. You could impact something else. You also want to verify the UDS tab is activated in NextGen. Most of us don't have to worry about that because we're community health centers. And also do not alter the preloaded questions and answers because this could also affect the template functionality. Remember, this is a national effort by NAC to make sure that we're looking at apples to apples reporting possibilities across the nation. So we want to be able to use this data to stratify across many organizations, many EMR platforms. There are currently three packages available. Um, there's one for the 5.8 UD1, UD2, and the 5.8 UD3 and higher is also compatible with 5.9.8.4, which is the um, newest release from NextGen. All of these are available on the NAC NextGen Success Community. We actually have a NAC NextGen user group. It is a private group, so if you do not have access to this group, you can always request access, and then there are several of us on the NAC NextGen Steering Committee that monitor those requests, and we grant it pretty quickly. There's a couple of steps to import this template. The very first link you'll see on the NAC NextGen user group chatter group is on the left, and there's actually an, an end user agreement that launches you back to NAC that you agreed to use um, the template. Then you download the appropriate package. Um, do again recommend a test environment. Don't put it into prod. And remember to import the images, templates, and documents. And there are help videos in the chatter group, so you have step-by-step -step instructions and videos. And then when you're all done with your testing, you're confident that it's working correctly, you can install it into your prod. Just a couple of more little, little bullet points of installation. Um, remember that you access it on the success community, that you do have to copy some images and copy templates and then import templates. You want to, there's some documents piece to it. You want to make sure your UDS is active. And then there's some optional steps as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the template in NextGen itself. So let me get here. Okay. 
There we go. All right, so you should be seeing now um, an instance of NextGen. I am currently in a 5883 environment. As you see, I have the prepare template brought up. It is a freestanding template. I myself have it just saved in my history um, icon there. I just click it, my history bar opens, I go to my preferred templates, and then I just have it saved as a default. Or I could do all and search for the template. So once I have it in my environment, again, I can launch it from a tab, sub nav, direct, left nav, wherever I want to take a look at it. Now keep in mind that you see that this little box is kind of going on there. Um, you see that it has panels like the look and feel of 8.3. So when you have a save close, you have a generate document button, you have your toggle control. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of the panels here. So one of the things that you'll notice is the first panel, which is the personal characteristics. Notice if your font is um, good enough, you'll see that these boxes are all kind of a gray background. This indicates that these are pulling from other places in the KBM or knowledge base module, meaning that they're documented somewhere else and the data is pulling forward to this template. So these are read-only fields. Nothing that I can enter in here. I have to go back to the recommended workflows to enter them in the appropriate locations. There is one area here that you can enter in and it is blood type and there's a pick list so you can indicate the blood type here. So it's basically pulling patient demographics, phone numbers, emails. There it is something new for if you have an older package and you haven't updated to one of the newer release ones in the last couple of months, you'll see that I have these verified boxes for ethnicity, race, and language. This is one of the updates to the template package, meaning that you can ask your staff who's doing the prepare template that they've verified this information. And you can actually date stamp that so you can make sure that they're doing what you've asked them to do. So the very first thing that you're going to notice is we have grids and questions. So it does require you to click on the question in the grid and then reply. Now keep in mind that if these are other areas in the KBM, it will launch the appropriate area that they want you to document it. Or it could be a pick list. So let's take a look at this first one, the migrant worker status. So at any point in the past few years, has seasonal or migrant farm work for been your or your family's main source of income? Once I click on it, it already says, hey, you've already answered this. So this is indicating one of two things. Either I've answered this in the template before, and I know that this is not true. This is a new patient for me, first time I've opened the template. Or it's indicating this is housed somewhere else. So it's saying if I want to update or remove it, then I have to select historic. So okay, we're going to do that. So notice I, on all of these, I have a most recent and historic. So I'm going to go miss historic. I'm going to click it again, and it's saying you're about to change an entry. These prompts are everywhere that this is um, going to happen. So notice the little box appears and what's going to happen is it's going to open up the area that I need to document to this that is pulling forward from. Well we know that this is pulling forward from our demographics and our um, UDS tab. So I could update it right here if I wanted to and then I would click OK. Notice I now have an answer here. If I wanted to change it, I could have in there, it would have populated here. And then I can say update. It reminds me again, you're about to change it. Would you like to proceed? Yes, voila, there, there I go. So same thing kind of for the veteran status. You know, it's doing the same thing for me. It's gonna launch that other template where it goes back to my demographics. But this one does not. This one actually is a pick list. So have I ever been discharged from the armed surface? Arms services of the United States, yes, no, or I choose not to answer. So keep in mind though, all of these grids, same as the functionality is 5883 and on, if I want to actually save it, I have to add it to the grids because these are where all the data is being stored. So I say add, I now have my reply. I'm going to go ahead and just close the panel so that we don't have to scroll as much and we can just go to the next one. Family and home. So we have a couple of questions here, and some more of these questions are pulling from other places. So how many family members, including yourself, do you currently live with? Well, this is pulling again from, you got it, patient demographics. So I'm going to say historic, click on it again, I'm saying I'm changing it. It's going to lead me right back to my UDS tab, to my family information that I could change here. So if I didn't want to change it, I could go back to most recent. So notice that the, I have more questions here. What's your housing situation today? 
three choices. We do encourage you not to change these selections and these answers here. These are the ones that NAC has approved that were built with the template, built from the paper version, and again, will enable NAC and some other um, individuals to stratify this information for apples to apples across DMR platforms. So we're gonna say this person has housing, okay? And again, I'm gonna add. Same thing, so if it's a pick list, I get an option, I say okay, and I say add. And this is basically how the whole template works. This is a nice addition right here. I like this addition. So prior, if I changed somebody's address and demographics, I didn't know what the old one was. It doesn't save it anywhere, it writes over it. Well, NextGen was able to fix that situation. So I can actually say, where do you live at now? It's gonna open up this, and I'm going to answer it. Sorry about that. I'm gonna answer. It's okay. Do you want to confirm? And look what it does, it confirms it. But it also gives me historic. So I'm gonna look at that piece just one more time. So if I want most recent, I can say, click on it, yes. I can look at historic, about to change, yes. I'm saying okay, yes, and update. Wonderful, so now I have all of this information readily available, very handy. Let's go back. So let's look at money and resources. I'm just gonna scan through some of these other ones here. Um, again, the health and insurance is pulling from the Health Plan of Pennsylvania, um, that's pulling from the primary insurance on the UDS tab as well. Money, again, that's pulling from, you got it, my UDS tab, my family income and sizes. Um, and all of these questions are here. So if you notice, you have to click on them. I get my pick list. I have to add each one of them. Where I get a lot of people get stumbling here is that they, kind of don't click and they don't add and they keep moving down saying, oh, I answered it. So they do this and then they go to right to the next one. Well, it doesn't save it unless you say add. So keep that in mind as one of the bugs. You also have the ability, this is one of the newer versions as well, that you can actually add an ICD-10 code here. So you can actually um, do a financial code if you wanted and add that additionally. Barriers to care as well, so about um, transportation. This is kind of a two-fold question. Has transformation kept you from medical appointments, meetings, works? Notice if I say yes, I say okay, it launches right another one. What about non-medical? So I also can answer that as a two-fold and say add at the same time, and it drops both of them. That one. The social, economic, and emotional health questions. So we have our couple of um, social integration and health questions, same thing, pick list. Um, this one is a free text, so you actually type, type into the box here. So that would not be what you would maybe want to pull for a report um, because it could be very specific to an individual patient. There's also a question about stress. Again, I have to click add every time I, I want to drop anything to those templates. So keep that all in mind if you don't click that. So let's take a little little bit here down at the, um, there's two different optional questions. There's one for non-confidential and one for confidential. So here's a couple of the optional non-confidential questions. Refugee, safety, do you feel emotionally and physically safe where you currently live? These anybody can see, there's no blocking of these. However, if you do notice this bottom piece here, you're gonna see that this one here, there's no arrow, so if I click, it doesn't open. So if I have rights in my work group, I can click on the wording, it will expand, and then I can also get my typical, include 
confidential information, similar to what you see in the histories template. So I can say, is there a history of incarceration? We'll say no. Again, add. And in the past year, have you been afraid of your partner or ex-partner? So we'll just say, okay. There we go. Now, once I'm all done, I can do even close, and that will actually close the whole template. So if I wanted to generate the document, before I hit save and close, I would want to make sure I said generate document. There are macros that are pulling to this document. So keep in mind, if you're familiar with Document Builder, you could adjust those macros and make it whatever format that you would want. But it does pull all of that to the macro itself. And there is one system practice template that I wanted to show you. System practice, we're going to say all. This is, there's actually a template here to, for the setup of the prepare template. So if you need to adjust anything, add, you can add more questions if you like. Just don't, um, again, alter the ones that come out of the package. But it says here I've got that it should be completed every once a year. Um, there, there's a lot of setup here. And again, the success community has very detailed um, guidance, videos, and papers. So keep in mind that if you're um, having problems, please use that as a reference. Here's that confidential permission area. So I can actually, based upon my work groups that I have set up in my system admin, I can say who um, I want to have rights and who I don't. So maybe I want to select this group to deny permission. I can then deny their permission and add them so that they would not be able to, on the template, expand that last section. So when they would try to come here and open it, it would do nothing for them. And even if they did like add a toggle button, even when that group would expand it, the grids are blank. So keep that in mind that that's a little bit how it looks. So let's, um, the current slide. So we'll go on back to our slide deck here. Okay. We did our live template. So steps to re um, acquire the template again, go to the Next Gen Success community. Um, there's the link. If you need to request access, please do. We'll make sure that we get you access to that pretty quickly. Um, here's some references. So there's one to the National Association of Community Health, the prayer why we're all here, and then the Next Gen Healthcare community um, area as well. And if there was any questions, we can take those now. Um, if you do need to have any other information about the next gen, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to assist you. And that concludes my portion.